also told her, oh, and by the way, Autodesk would like us to promote their virtual event. And if we can... They formed a company called Alchemy Labs. We're a small independent game studio, and we're working on a title called Smuggle Truck. Uh, we are giving a presentation today on 2D and 3D techniques in Unity, so how to make 2D games in Unity. And our game is currently in review with Apple, so it'll be on the App Store soon. Um, and I'm going to start it off with you, Mark. All right, so uh, we're trying to make a 2D game in a 3D engine. It seems a bit bizarre. And with a 3D engine, you're not going to get a 2D workflow handed out to you, so we're going to go ahead and create our own. And uh, the first thing you have to do, one of the most important key decisions you have to make is which way, which direction your axes go. And uh, let's do a hand count in this room of how many people prefer a Y up coordinate system. And how many people prefer a Z up coordinate system? And those people with their hands up, if you don't mind leaving the room. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. The point here being, it doesn't matter which way your axes go. What matters is, once you've made that decision, you want to stick to it throughout all your scene setups in Unity. Because if you keep changing it around, it's going to cause a lot of problems for you. We actually ran into that problem, and we had to stick with it. And uh, we'll show you more once we actually go into Unity and show you how our scene setup is made. Uh, another important piece of the puzzle is having planes ready, and not that kind of plane, but this kind of a 3D plane ready. And uh, Unity does have its own plane primitive that comes in at a hefty 200 triangles. And I say hefty, of course, as a mobile developer on desktop, you can do whatever the hell you want. Um, but what you want to do is, from your paper 3D package, import six different planes made up of two triangles. And I say six because um, you know you have the positive and negative versions of each three axes, x, y, and z and make them have no rotation on them and have a uh, uniform scale, so 1, 1, 1. And th the reason this is important is that once you're going into complex hierarchies in Unity and making your UI and your objects, once those scales and rotations start stacking up, it can get really confusing and really start messing with your head. So the less stacking rotations you have, the easier time you're going to have once you, uh, when you're creating your UI. Um, and one final uh, piece of the workflow is your cameras. So in Unity, there are two projections, orthographic and perspective projections for cameras. And you might ask yourself, well, if I'm making a 2D game, why do I want a perspective projection? It turns out that it actually has its uses, uh, that we use it in Smoke Truck to get easy parallaxing happening in our scene, which Alex is also going to demonstrate later on. But with an orthographic projection, uh, it's much more predictable, and it's much easier to position things in, a, in the viewport of an orthographic camera. And the distance of an object away from the orthographic camera in the, in the depth axis doesn't actually matter in terms of its scale. Anything that anything that could be as far as as far as the way it's possible, still the same size. Yep. So I'm going to show you that setup right now um, and jump out of Keynote and open up the project. <coughs> so um, first, I'm going to start off by saying that here's our, our scene setup. We have multiple scenes laid out. Um, in Unity, so what, it's kind of like this encapsulation, the, a scene in Unity, and so we have our main menu, we have our loader scene, which just contains our company logo, so when you load up on the iPhone, for, or, or any platform, it loads that first, so it's very quick and easy to load up. We have our main menu, we have our game scene, and we have our level editor scene, so that's the entirety of all the scenes in the game. Actually, we also have the Brass Monkey controller scene, so you can see here's our scenes folder. Um, what I'm looking at right now is the main menu scene. So, if I um, kind of tumble around here, you can see that we have an orthographic camera, which I have selected right now, and it's looking at a full screen quad, just one poly, uh, which is this background here. So, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. We can just take the camera if we'd like, and we can move it left and right, and moving that camera will give the appearance of the elements moving the opposite direction. So when we say, okay, we'd like the, uh, for example, the camera, which let me just select the main camera right now. Um, so if we say, okay, we'd like to go to the level select menu, it's a simple process of just moving the camera over to here. So we have all of our menus set up um, kind of linearly, and we just snap the camera from one place to another. The user has no idea that that's happening, and you get the appearance of just switching menus. Um, you could also line them up and do smooth animations between them, so you could slide between different areas of the game. Um, and so that's, that's how we have our menu system set up. You can see uh, everything is simple. <coughs> Something that exists in front in the Z depth will sort on top. So here's the Z axis. This, um, this button right here, select level, that actually exists in front of the plane. 
Therefore, the camera will see it as showing in front. Pretty simple. What I'm going to do is open up the game level and show you how that differs and how we're actually building the, the game here. So I'm going to select the camera. So we have two cameras in our game scene. So let me just rotate here. So what Umos was saying before is that we have a perspective camera and we have an orthographic camera. So our perspective camera is right here and it's looking at the truck currently. So let me change, why is that still so, oh, okay, I got you, yeah. So I'm gonna hit play for a second. So here's our perspective camera and it's looking at a series of objects that exist in 3D. So first we have our car, right here, we could look at that, or our truck. Um, existing in front of that is the ground plane and all the objects that exist at a level. So a level object, something that we created, a construct, it contains a theme. So right here we're looking at a desert level. So all we have to do is change the key desert to forest. And for example, it'll take the background and it'll change it to the forest sky. And it'll change the ground to the different hue that's used in the forest. And it'll take the trees that are used in the desert and change them over to the trees in the forest. So a one word change will change the entire scene. Um, and so what we have here is elements that are stacked kind of in distance. So if we look at the mesas, which are in the background, those exist very far away from the camera. Therefore, if I just take the camera, this perspective again, this wouldn't work in an orthographic camera. If I slide the camera from left to right, the car and the, the rocks and the, the, um, the cacti, they're all gonna move at a certain speed. The mesas are gonna work, uh, move at a different speed. The background mesas are going to move at an even slower speed. So the distance from the camera determines the speed of the parallax. So it's something that you would have to code in manually um, if you were just doing a 2D game in Flash, for example. So you'd want the clouds to move at you know, 0.1 of what the camera's moving or whatever. Here you just move the camera and it just works. So I'm going to switch back to Keynote to talk about some of the issues with that and some of the pros of that. So as I was saying, we have our demo scene set up. We have layered uh, objects, as I was talking about, and parallaxing, so distance from the camera equals slower parallax. Um, that gives the illusion of depth. So a couple issues that come up. Uh, I'm gonna get all nerdy here and talk about something. Um, the perspective camera can sometimes give inconsistent sorting due to the fact that it's calculating the vector three distance uh, from the center point of the plane. So I'm gonna show you that in a demo which will be much easier to, to talk about than, than to kind of like talk about it conceptually. So here in this demo scene, we have three objects, a camera, perspective, and then an object called one, which is just a plane with the number one on it, and an object called two, which is the same thing, but it's existing physically in front of the other plane, right? So two should always render on top of one based on the fact that it's closer to the camera, but that's not always true, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to take the camera in the scene view, and I'm going to slide it around in real time. Okay, so right here, two sorts behind one, and the reason is, if you look in the scene view, I have some debug lines being drawn here, and so it's basically showing the camera to plane one and the camera to plane two. And I have it printing out values here. So in any normal case, the number one is a higher distance, 193 versus 180. But at a certain point, two is actually farther away than one, so it sorts behind. So that's why you need to deal with uh, having a render sorting mechanism built into Unity. So we built our own custom solution, and I'll talk about that. Um, and it's pretty simple, actually. The sorting fix is to use a property called material.renderqueue. So um, here's a screenshot from the documentation. So it says, the description of that is the render queue, the material, not very helpful. But what it's gonna do is we can say that a certain material can be farther away from a camera physically, but still draw in front. And so we came up with this little editor script where we can create queue groups and say, okay, clouds are gonna exist at layer 3000. And that's the default value for render views. Um, we want the rocks to exist in front of them no matter what we do. So set that to 3,020. 
So using these numbers, we can manually force render queues. And so that's how we were able to get away from the issue of things popping behind or popping in front. You're just forcing the values based on, based on numbers. Could you for have your render queue for like uh, certain types of materials be the same, but then default to the standard distance if they are the same? Yeah, so 3,000 is the standard distance if you don't add it to this queue. So 3,000 will just be. Now, um, in this, we, we create higher numbers for things that will sort in front of those, and then you could do lower numbers that sort behind that. So you could just not touch anything you don't want to really get into, and then put overrides in, in these values. Because what I'm thinking is if you're actually going to use this to say, uh, keep clothing on top of a character, but you still want uh, characters to occlude one another dis despite the render queues. Right, yeah, so you could set, you know, if a character is never going to go behind another character, you could just force its value in front. Um, and yeah, this is only for alpha transparent planes. So if we're talking about 3D characters, this is, none of this is really necessary. This is just for sorting, and we're talking about, you know, in 2D games, sprites okay. and whether they're going to be in front or in front. And if you wanted something to always be in front, say your UI. <coughs> yes. So we're actually going to talk about that right now. Yep. yep. Great so, segue. Yeah, they did perfect. There you go. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about creating your UI when you're making a 2D game in Unity. Um, so Unity comes with two systems in place to create graphical user interfaces. One is the older archaic system, which is based on GUI elements that uses GUI text and GUI textures. And uh, the relatively newer system, not so new anymore, uses the GUI API uh, that you can use in the on GUI method of your scripts. And this relies on GUI skins and GUI styles to change the appearance of, your, of, how your, uh, of your buttons. Uh, but for Smuggle Truck, we actually rolled out our own 3D GUI using the uh, second orthographic camera that you saw in our scene. And there are several reasons why. Uh, using a 3D GUI made up of planes that are just facing an orthographic camera has some advantages. Uh, Obviously, Smuggle Truck is a multi-platform title. It's coming out on iPhone, uh, iOS, iPad, and Mac and PC. So we have many different resolutions and many different aspect ratios to handle. Um, and what 3D GUIs allow you to do is that it scales very nicely with resolution. So Alex, if you could go into the main menu scene. Yeah. And just pop out the game view. And just scale it up and down. So this is our UI made up of 3D planes facing orthographic camera, and as you're scaling down and up, no matter the resolution, as long as you keep the aspect ratio the same, it scales down very nicely, which is something you don't get with the existing GUI systems that are in Unity, unless you do a lot of manual calculation of the screen rectangles yourself, which can be a bit, bit laborious. Um, just real quick, um, what Ilmas was saying, I just want to kind of back that up, because I didn't really show it very well. Um, in our scene, where we have the truck and everything, I'm going to pause it again. Uh, I was showing the camera that faces this direction. I should stop. Okay. Um, so we have that camera that looks into the scene. If I turn around 180 degrees, we have a whole menu system set up back here. So that's how we're doing our UI. So it's a 3D UI that exists in the scene, but it's facing the other direction. <laughs> Under. Um, yeah. And so. This gets layered and rendered on top, which is what he was talking about. So I just wanted to point right. that out. And a quick tip is that it doesn't have to be facing the opposite way, because you can set cameras to render specific layers. So it's not like the perspective camera is going to render the HUD if it's in its frustum. It's not because they're set on different layers. Yes, John? Is that a render to texture, or is that some other technique? Sorry, say that again? Is that a render to texture? How are you overlaying the two camera oh, images? Oh, it's when you have two cameras, you can set their depth value. If you, Alex, click on one of the cameras. Oh, right yeah. there, actually, it's right there. Depth value. If you set them uh, relative to each other, uh, I think the other camera has a depth of uh, zero or negative one, and this one has a depth of one. So this one gets drawn on top of each other. One thing you have to do, though, is you have to set the clear flag of this camera to depth only, so it doesn't clear what was drawn behind it. Yeah, it's a it's a common technique to use 3D elements as a UI is to just have a second camera render and just do that. So like if you're doing a speedometer in a game, it'd be much easier to actually make a plane and have it rotate and use that as your UI and just do a second camera somewhere else in the distance. 